Let's imagine we have a .NET Core Web API project where we need to generate a PDF report. Even though it shouldn't be too hard to do something like that, we could end up losing too much time if we don't know how to do it properly. So, in this video, we're gonna show how to use the Dink to PDF library to easily generate PDF documents while working on the .NET Core Web API project. If you want, you can download the source code for this project by visiting our article on Codemaze blog. The link is in the description below. So, we've created a brand new ASP.NET Core Web API project named PDF Generator. And the first thing we're gonna do is to modify the launch settings JSON file by removing the IIS profile and disabling automatic launch of the web browser. Ding to PDF is a cross-platform oriented library which is the wrapper for the WebKit HTML to PDF library. It uses the WebKit engine to convert HTML to PDF. It allows us to create a PDF document from the HTML string generated in our project or to create a PDF document from an existing HTML page. Additionally, we can download the created PDF document or save it in a certain location on disk or return a new HTML page with the PDF content. We're gonna cover all these features in this video. So let's begin. First, let's install the Ding to PDF library. After the installation completes, we have to import native library files to the root of our project. You can find these files in the source code of our project in the native library folder. So let's choose the files from the 64-bit folder. And finally, we need to register this library with our IOC container in the Startup CS class. To learn in more detail about the service registration process in the .NET Core and how to keep startup methods cleaner, you can read the .NET Core service configuration article on our site. The link is in the description of this video as well. Excellent! We have everything in place and we are ready to proceed. In a real-world project, we can collect data from the database or receive it from an API. But for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna create a local storage for that purpose. So let's first create a new folder models and inside it the employee.cs file with the name, last name, age and gender properties. To continue, we're gonna create a new utility folder and two classes inside it data storage.cs and template generator.cs. Now let's modify the data storage.cs file. We're making the class static and create a new static method get all employees, which will return a list of employees that will be displayed inside the HTML template. We're going to return multiple objects from this method. And each of these objects will have their own unique property values. Now, let's modify the template generator file. It's going to be static as well. So, in the getHTML string method, we fetch all the employees from our local storage and create a new string builder object. Then, Let's append an HTML code inside the string builder object. So basically, we create a simple HTML markup code with a single div for the header and a table with four columns for each property from the employee class. Then we iterate through our employees list and create a row with four cells by using the append format method from the string builder object. Finally, we add closing tags for the table, body, 
and HTML and return our HTML string. To style our report, let's create a new assets folder and inside it the new styles.css file. Ok, let's add the header class where we center the header, add a green color to it and add a padding bottom of 35 pixels. Then let's style a table using the width and border collapse properties. Additionally, we apply styles for the td and th tags. And finally, adding a background color and text color for the table header. And that's it. We have our HTML template required for the PDF creation. Now we can continue to the controller logic. In the controllers folder, we're going to create a new empty API controller named PDF Creator Controller. Now let's modify it. First, let's inject our registered converter with the dependency injection inside our constructor by using iConverter interface. Then, in the create PDF action, we create a global settings object and populate the color mode property, orientation, paper size to A4, page margins, documents title and the output for our file. Then we create a new object by instantiating the object settings class and populate the pages count property to true, HTML content with the HTML string generated in the template generator class, web settings where we set the default encoding to UTF-8 and provide a path to our stylesheet document to the user stylesheet property. Then we continue with the header settings property where we set the font name to Arial font size to 9, the right property to its own value and the line property to true. Additionally, we set up the footer settings with the font name Arial, font size 9, line to true and the center property to report footer. Now, we create an object of type HTML to PDF document and populate the global settings and the object's properties. All we are left to do is to call the convert method with the PDF object and return the successful result. One important note. The folder from the out path should be previously created or the conversion won't work. To learn more about the global settings and object settings classes, you can read our article on our site. Additionally, you can read how to deploy this application and what changes need to be applied in order to do that. Now let's start our application, open our browser and send a simple request towards our PDF creator endpoint. As a result, we have created a document in the PDF creator folder. And let's inspect the content of the document. And there it is. Excellent, let's continue. If you want to show our document in a browser instead, we can configure that quite easily too. So let's stop the application and remove the out property from the global settings object. Then we're just gonna modify this line of code to store the result. Without the out property, our output will be stored in a buffer. Finally, 
Let's return the file with our created file variable and the appropriate content type. And that's all it takes. We can start the application again and inspect the result. As you can see, our PDF document is opened in a browser. Now, we don't have to use our custom HTML template to generate PDF content. We can use an existing HTML page. The effort is minimal. All we have to do is to remove the HTML content property and add the page property of the object settings class. After these changes, let's start the app and inspect the result. Well, we can see the site content on our PDF document. But we are not done yet. If we want to enable a download feature for the PDF document, we need to modify our return statement in our action method. So, all we have to do is to simply add the name of the file with its extension to the return statement. As a result, we can see our file being downloaded. And there it is. Everything is working as it's supposed to. So, that's all for this video. If you liked it and want to support us, you may hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. Of course, don't forget you can visit the CodeMaze blog to download the source code. Additionally, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. So, stay tuned and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best!